In this video, we're talking all about Walt Disney World, our favorite park, our least favorite park. We're talking about the competition, Epic Universe. We're also going to dive into this Moana journey of water thing. There was some new video that was released today. Super impressive, right? No, <laughs> we're going to talk about that up next on OG55. Welcome aboard to another episode of OG55. We are joined by a very special guest. Now, she's been on the channel before, but it's been about a year. Amanda Wicked Virtue. Welcome back, Hi. Amanda. And I have been to Disney this time. If you're part, if you know the lore of my time on this channel, <laughs> I had never been to Disney. Now I've been to them all. So let's let's get we, we got a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. I yeah, last time shirt. I got a steam a steamboat Willie shirt. Oh, nice. I got it when I was there. I have two, actually. I got a button-up one. You know the Roosevelt button-up? I wore yes. that one at Epcot. Oh, it's, it's, I, I love the, the, the aesthetic of the old-school stuff. The Steamboat really love it, clearly. But yeah. Oh, man. And, you know, the, the Roosevelt stuff is really cool. It's like... It is. I didn't know right? they had women's stuff. Because I, I get the ads. It's always guy stuff. And I looked. I mean, I could have got a guy one. But I'm like, there's a women's section? And I saw the Steamboat Willie, and I was like, oh, getting it right now. Nice, and actually, nice. speaking of, we were talking before the recording uh, with paging Mr. Morrow, who is uh, a Disney influencer and a, uh, a vlogger on YouTube. He is heavily into uh, the Roosevelt brand. They actually, I believe they sponsor him. They sponsor his wow. channel. And he does a lot of uh, cross promotions with them. Nice, nice. They actually have, um, George, when we went down to um, CityWalk, uh recently mm -hmm. together i think they actually have a universal version of roosevelt uh, city walk right they had like the felix the cat stuff and all that yeah yeah i, I actually kind of like it. it it's a nice brand yeah it's, yeah, it's it really is. cool mm -hmm. it's really cool but uh amanda if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media your youtube your twitch all that good stuff okay yeah i am on youtube it's just wicked virtue no space i and i've actually i uh do my gaming streams on kick now same thing, Wicked Virtue, no space, uh, and uh, Wicked underscore Virtue underscore on socials, Instagram, Twitter. I'm, uh, I'm everywhere. You'll find me. If you find me somewhere, you'll see my link tree, and then there's all my stuff. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And I, and I will link your link tree down below. <laughs> so everyone can check all your socials out. Definitely give her a subscribe. Now, Amanda, you've blown up. Last time that you were on the channel, I think you were like – I think you had like 500 subs or something. And I don't now even think you... I had 500 at that point. I think I had like 200 and now I'm a little over 2K. So I'm getting there finally. You're I, uh, crushing just, it. I started doing more. You know, I, I used to just upload my gaming clips, but now I actually do pop culture news. I do a, these guys have been on it. I do a podcast every week. Uh, and that, that was fun. That was a fun one. If you yeah. guys find my channel and you want to check it out, it's under my, uh, the playlist for Wicked's World. Uh, we had a nice little, little nerdy, theme park conversation over there as usual yeah absolutely yeah check her out she amanda's awesome friend of the channel we love amanda so subscribe follow her on twitter all that good stuff link tree in the description down below and right over here i got this italian guy named george citrus mm -hmm. george welcome back to the channel sir it's been a long time since i've seen you man it's you been good. a while it's been a while yeah the beard's coming in quite nicely it only took two days uh <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to find this Italian stallion, forget about it. You know, d don't worry about it. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Disney George. You could also find me on the podcast called A Walk with Walt. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. And OG, if we're going to talk about it, we have to say the correct way to pronunciate this this is journey of water inspired by moana there we go exactly inspired by moana just like our treehouse at disneyland is like was it the adventureland treehouse inspired Sp by the swiss family robinson it's yes like, it's like, Why? Yeah. like they don't own it they can't just say it like 
<laughs> it's so ridiculous. Just call it the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. It's so weird, you know? It's like the most ridiculous thing ever, Amanda. Now, Amanda, from what I understand, you're Italian as well, right? Yes. Okay, so we got the three. Uh, so we got three Italianos. Yeah. <laughs> and gesturing her. Watch out. We're not. I actually have to move her, my Selena. I just recently got this. I, I'm so afraid I'm going to knock her over during like a deep conversation. So she, I got to move her. <laughs> that, the Catwoman's awesome. I, I love that. You, yeah, it was a gift. It's a, you want to see closer? It's a NECA. And I've wanted it for so long that someone sent it to me. And I was like, oh my goodness. Oh, it's nice. got the changeable faces too. I could take this off and it would just be her crazy hair. That's um, awesome. The Michelle Pfeiffer one too. That's my favorite. That's my favorite cat woman for sure. Oh yeah. She's we can she's like the only one that matters. No offense to everyone else, but like come on, that performance, she's top tier. No one no one's gonna beat it. She no one's coming. It. No. So you mean to tell me it she uh beats Halle Berry? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. He just gets yeah. offended and starts a whole war. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Okay, so let's get into this Moana. Um, well, what, what did I... <laughs> speaking of speaking of, let's segue right over. <laughs> <laughs> what is Journey of Water inspired, inspired by, Moana. by Moana? Yeah, there we go. God, the Imagineers are really you know they're they're really making us work over here. I'm telling you, with all their lingo. Um, but this is I, I can't I can't imagine people going to Epcot and they're pulling out their phones and they're pulling out their maps and they're saying, yeah, let's go over to Journey of Water inspired by Moana. Like every single time they mention it, they're really going to say that. I know. <laughs> you so probably ridiculous. will, George. I feel like you will because you're yes. going to well, Guilty. actually – Guilty. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's inspired by, you know. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so weird. But uh, this is from uh, Scott Gustin. He's saying, uh, he, he posted here today, uh, Disney has shared a first look at Journey of Water inspired by Moana. The attraction opens later this year at Epcot. I'm not going to play the, the sound because Disney will uh, oh, rake me up. They'll get me. They'll absolutely get me. So this is... Look, I mean, this is cute. I mean, I get it. You know, kids will I mean, love it. Kids will love it. I think the issue with a lot of fans, though, is like this took like a decade to like build. Wow, that looks cool, though. <laughs> the that part was really cool. The uh, oh my gosh, I can't even remember her name. The um, the Tafiti. Tafiti. Thank you. Yeah. Tafiti. Yeah. I should know. <laughs> but yeah, that looked really cool. That was. But you're right. I feel like I heard about this so long ago. I mean, when did Moana come out? 2015, 2016? 2016. 2016. So yeah, this took them a while. You think they would have hopped on it right away because Moana was. It's still popular, but when for the first three years it was out, it was Moana everything with kids. They made the announcement. Actually, I was at the expo when they made this announcement. Uh, we were actually in the queue to actually enter the showroom floor where they had a lot of the uh, the media and the vloggers get a sneak preview prior to the expo. So everything was released before we even got into into the convention center. And they said, breaking news, you know, Moana inspired walkthrough attraction at Epcot. And that was back in 2019. That was in 2019 wow. when it was announced. So this thing is taken well over four years to open. And I, I'm sorry. And it took Pandora with two attractions, what, six years. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, this is a walkthrough. I don't understand why it would take that long. But but I mean, I, I guess the, the world went crazy in 2020. So, I mean. Yeah. You but still, so you think that gives them more time? Like, hey, everything's kind of closed down. So. But yeah, right. I mean, I, what you're saying is right. Yes, it took them a while for Pandora, but that's. But you have to that, think, Wick. That's you have a to, whole little town over there. But you have to think, Wicked, yeah. that would be too easy. That's a simple route to go. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, all right. But yeah. yeah. This, this, I, I mean, I'll see. I'm going to, I'll check it out. I'm, I'm over here. So once they do, is there an opening date yet or not even? They did a soft opening for cast members, I know. Yeah, I but, saw that. Yeah. But I haven't heard an official opening date for for guests i am curious myself to see it, it does look interesting and especially in the florida heat you know yeah. a, a lot of water uh, aesthetics is always welcome in, in any of the disney parks i just would have preferred it would have been better in animal kingdom in my right. that would make sense that's where you can meet her too you can meet moana and mm -hmm. animal yeah it's an animal kingdom yeah yeah and yeah, soon it looks 
and soon to be possibly another Moana <laughs> land supposedly going to be opening in the Dino Rama area. So Moana's everywhere. <laughs> She's everywhere. It, it looks very Animal Kingdom y. You know, it really it does. does. The vibe for sure. Right? It's totally Animal Kingdom. I mean, I, I understand they got rid of Future World and they're doing this whole thing now, like world discovery, world nature. This is part of world nature. I've, right, George, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, so, this is part I, of like with the land and soaring and everything. I'm sorry, folks. I've said it on this channel way too many times, but you know what? I'll give it another run and say it again. It's Future World. I'm sorry. There's Future World and World Showcase. I don't get yeah. these neighborhood things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get it. Like they're doing the different routes, so they're doing it, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I think that like this would be way better served in Animal Kingdom. Um, it just would fit that park aesthetically so much better. And especially um, for the heat that, that right. goes through that park. And OG, you know, you felt that, that heat in that park. You know, they could always use more water. <laughs> yeah. That park, Animal Kingdom. God, I love Animal Kingdom. It's like seriously the best, but like the humidity in that place because of the, the trees is like out of control. Uh, when I went, it was like, I don't know what the feels like temperature was. I've only been to Animal Kingdom once uh, still, but it was in the 90s and I was like, whew, <laughs> just to put it lightly. It was pretty yes. warm. Yeah, It's warm. Wait, so the last time you went to Animal Kingdom was in the 90s? It was, no, no, I mean the temperature was the 90s. Oh, okay, yeah, because yeah. I thought... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's it was hot like that. We went what we went twice, right, George? When we I went on our twice. trip. Yeah. Yeah. And both times it was so humid. Like I, I was I just felt wet all the time in that part. Like for whatever reason, it was just sticky. Florida and in a nutshell. I just felt <laughs> wet <laughs> all the time. It's completely opposite to like California, which is like we got like the driest heat ever yeah. in Florida. It's just like that sticky, icky, you know, and it's. But Animal Kingdom is a beautiful park. But yeah, this Moana mm -hmm. thing would be better over there. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird to have it and then have Spaceship Earth kind of looming over. I don't it know. Is. It is, but yeah. why you know. does Disney do some of the things they do? We will never know. <laughs> we'll never know. You know, it's 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 it seems very. Um, I don't know. It seems very spreadsheety, right? Like very like okay, so we got Epcot, room here, so put it there. <laughs> right exactly and, and like okay so this park needs this demographic so moana fits that demographic so how do we fit this demographic in this park right that kind of thing i kind of feel like that was like the mindset with this i don't know well you know we'll see and like you said george it's it's cool like you know to like that park does get very hot especially that area of epcot gets very very hot so this would be like a nice little way to cool down kind of walk through um, I think fans would be more open or more excited about it if it just didn't take so long. Because when, when mm -hmm. it's kind of like the, the Tron thing, right? It, I was just going to say Tron. It, it ruined Tron. It just takes too long, and then it's like at the end. There's so much anticipation. The hype dies down. Exactly right. It just kind of dies down. So I don't know. We'll see, but. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to check it out. I don't know when I'll be back to Florida. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. But um, but now, Wicked, you're you're now a Florida resident. So when this mm -hmm. opens, you're you're planning on checking it out. Yeah, I will. I'll go check it out. Um, whenever it opens, we'll we'll see when. Maybe this year. Maybe next year. I, yeah. It should open this year. But uh, I don't know. Is there if is there like an an look for the, well, there is obviously an anniversary. I wonder if they're gonna wait until it's been like oh, it's been this many years since Moana premiered, and maybe they'll do it then. That's that would possible. kind of make sense, but I don't, I have no idea when that date is. But I think I think it I think it premiered I think in November. November. Uh, okay, yes. so then it'd be soonish. Okay. Soonish. Also, <laughs> I think Epcot's uh, birthday is coming up pretty soon, right, George? Isn't it like October first? First. Yeah. So it no, might. So be, that might be. That yeah. might be it. So you know, yeah. well, you that know, would make we'll sense. see. Or they might be waiting for Epic Wonderful. Universe to open, so they have something to open when that park actually. If opens. they wait that long, though, then it's what is it, twenty twenty five? Yeah, twenty twenty five. Oh my yeah. god! And it, that 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 wouldn't be the right response. That's just like no, I think it will be. Like, I think so it will be Moana. It will be Moana. Something Moana. But it's gonna think? be it's gonna be over at Animal Kingdom. I I have this it's funny feeling ride. it's gonna be Moana and Zootopia. I don't know. I just have this funny feeling that we're going to hear something at Destination D23. You know, it's funny. Like before I went to Disney World this past, this like last month or whatever, I was fine with Zootopia going into Animal Kingdom. I was like, yeah, they're animals. Why not? Like, who cares? You know, 
now i'm like <laughs> i don't know because that park is so beautiful it's so organic feeling like when you walk in with the trees and everything and like i can see now why fans would have an issue with zootopia because it's a very plasticky looking world honestly do yeah. you know what it would probably feel like zootopia in animal kingdom would be like moana at epcot it's right. nice it's appealing separately but right. when you place it in the surrounding park that you're putting it in it feels out of place. Yeah, it it's very, they have like the aesthetic for Animal Kingdom is probably like perfect because all the other parks, it's not that they're not perfect, but like you said, throwing Moana in Epcot's kind of weird. Moana definitely fits more in Animal Kingdom. The vibe is just wonderful over at Animal Kingdom. They have it perfect. Like there's a Lion King. There's, I loved all the Lion Kings. Of it. The, the band, like you walk and you see Bambi, it's all animals. And Zootopia, it's more like, uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but they wear clothes and stuff. They're like people, but they're animals. It's not <laughs> like that with the other animals that they have at Animal Kingdom. Like, yeah, they talk. Of course, it's Disney movies, but like Simba isn't walking around with a, a shirt on. You know, like he's a, <laughs> he's a lion, like not yeah. not a not a person lion. You know what I mean? So it, it doesn't fit. Zootopia maybe would fit better at Epcot. They should switch it. Let's keep all the Moana stuff over uh, Animal Kingdom. And if you want to do Zootopia, throw it over at Epcot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, now, Wicked, last time we had you on, you, you've never been to Disney Park. Now you've been no. to all of them in Florida. So Epcot, since we're on the topic of Epcot, like what were your overall thoughts about that park when you, when you visited it for the first time? So for Epcot, it's funny because when I was here, that's the park that I wanted to go to the, the most because I want to eat the food. I remember saying that and everyone, you guys were like, Epcot, really? Out of all of them? I'm like, yeah, I want to eat. Um, <laughs> and I went and I didn't actually get to to enjoy the food i did eat but it was like a quick service thing it, it down poured like really bad and it was just it was just like one of those days where it was kind of off and i wasn't there for that long so i i don't dislike epcot at all i can't wait to go back and actually experience it to fully and and go around to the booths because they have the food and wine festival going on right now i can't wait it's yeah. going till november so i'll definitely be there at least one more time while that's going on um, but some of the booths weren't even open either. And I was there kind of earlier. So it's like, now I know, let me go later so that I make sure that all the booths are open and I get to, you know, so my experience wasn't great, but I'm, I still have high hopes for Epcot. Like I would say out of all the parks right now, Epcot's probably my least favorite, but once wow. I get to actually experience it, it might actually be, this is going to be weird, but it might actually be Hollywood studios. That would be my least favorite, but I still love Hollywood studios. I like all the parks. But if I'm ranking them Hollywood Studios after I, I have to fully experience Epcot and give it a real chance to really, you know, to to accurately judge it. No, so no, that's it, it. Now that's interesting that you say that. Now, have you experienced Magic Kingdom yet? Yeah, twice. Okay, so you have experienced Magic Kingdom, but you haven't Hollywood Studios yet. I no, I have. I've been to Hollywood Studios oh, okay. twice too. Okay, so so Magic Kingdom is still above for Hollywood Studios for you. Yeah. I do like Hollywood Studios, though. I actually, my fa favorite place to go there is the um, the Minnie's Diner. It's the um, Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood Vine. Vine. Uh, it's so it's so cute in there, and they're always so like, especially the Minnie is just so adorable and lovable <laughs> to everybody. Like, I took a picture. I actually had it on my Instagram, and it was hilarious. I think it was with Minnie. It was with Minnie or Mickey, and there was some lady in the background just cheesing in the, the background <laughs> of my picture, and I'm like. I posted it and I was like, lol, look at this lady. She was just like <laughs> in my background. <laughs> but it was that so is... I, I do and I love the vibe. I love 50s stuff. The next time I go there, I want to go to the 50s diner that they have there so bad. Um, so I do like it. It's hard to judge. That's what I'm saying. I didn't have the best experience at Epcot just because of the kind of day that it was. It was really rainy and hot and muggy. And it was just it was just like an off day for me as well. So I wasn't fully like myself that day either. You know, we all have those days. So yeah. I didn't get to really um, enjoy it like I wanted. So I don't want to put it last, but I have to just because of the experience. So I'm going to I have to go back and give it a, a fair chance. I do yeah, like Hollywood Studios. I like Star Wars. Star Wars I could be way better. It could be way better. But there's fun parts in it. And, and the, the aesthetic is nice for Hollywood Studios. I love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad. That's my favorite ride there. It's, oh, it's a, the best ride um, at Hollywood <laughs> Studios. Um, I would say it's hard for me to pick between my favorite two between Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom. It, probably Magic Kingdom because I've been there twice and I've got to do the full experiences. They have all the great rides. Like I Peter Pan, I love the Peter Pan ride, the Pirates ride. Like all the all the best rides are probably over there at Magic Kingdom. Now, Wicked, let me ask you a very important question. Have you or have you ever been to Disneyland yet? 
No. Okay. So now let me, let me say when you experienced, because I was the same way with magic kingdom, mm -hmm. when you experience Disneyland and then go back to magic kingdom, it's different. You get a completely different perspective of what the magic kingdom really is. Yeah. And actually OG came up with the most brilliant <laughs> anecdote of how you can explain this. And honestly, it needs to be, it needs to be a t-shirt. It really well, does. Well, my, my whole thing Make was it. like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Teespring, right. You know, monetize it. No, like my whole thing was like magic kingdom kind of feels like the live action version of Disneyland. Right. So it, it hits all the same beats. Like you got the castle, you got the main street, you got this, you got that, but it just kind of lacks, I don't know, Disneyland, it's just, it's you, it hits you. It's, it, there's something about that place that's like palpable and you feel it. And Magic Kingdom felt really like kind of like just a shell sort of compared to Disneyland, which is kind of funny because, like, like as a Disneyland person, Magic Kingdom is actually my last park. Like, Your all the favorite? other ones, were, like, yeah, my least favorite, out of all of them. And I think it's because I grew up in California with Disneyland. It sort of like tainted my perception of like the castle park. Okay. Because Disneyland is like such a textbook perfect like park in a lot of ways. And Walt touched it too, so his magic is there still. So I'm sure you that can, makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Can you tell? Huge difference. You oh, can yeah, definitely yeah. tell. Yeah, you can definitely tell. It is a big part of it. So yeah, it, it definitely does. But like Magic Kingdom, there was stuff in there that I really did enjoy. Like the the mine train, like that was like super fun. <laughs> I didn't get to, like, I haven't that's the one that I want to do that I haven't gotten a chance yeah. to do yet. Oh uh, man, this guy is it, th th this guy he, we wrote it together and he, he didn't expect it because it, it like it, it darts you out of the, the train Oh, state. it's one of those. And he's like He's like, oh shit, this thing's starting already. <laughs> like, I didn't expect that because I thought, okay, it's a kid ride, you know? Like, I thought we were going to like go through the motions of like, you know, okay, we're going to see Snow White and the dwarf go slow and then it'll pick up. <laughs> this thing, like, literally, you put your thing on your, your, your lap belt and it's like, it just launches you. It's like I had a ride like that. So, I, this was a long time ago when I was a teenager. I went to Canada's Wonderland and they had the Italian job ride there. And I get on it and my one friend was sitting behind me. This was in high school, so it's uh, I don't know if they still have this ride. Um, but I'm like, is it fast? And he just goes, and I was like, what is it? And it was like, Whoa. I was like, oh, because it starts off like so fast. I was like, ow, oh, it actually hurt because I was turned toxic. Like, is it fast? He's just like, I'm like, what's that answer? And then it just <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Are you are now wicked? Are you kind of a coaster junkie? Like, do you like like the fast stuff, or are you kind um, of shy away I, from it? I do. I don't shy away from it. Like, I'm. I'll try it at least once. Like an example is I I will we'll get into Universal and then you guys give me your thoughts. I know you went there. I don't know if you went on the Velocicoaster. I like the Velocicoaster, but it's not one that I would want to do every time because it's just so intense. It's so intense, um, but it's fun. I like the Velocicoaster. Uh, same thing with uh, where I used to live. They had the the Ride of Steel, the Superman ride. And I used to be terrified to go on it because it was that 50 foot drop. It goes all the way up and then it just drops you. And, and I was a kid when that first opened and I was always so terrified of it, but I would do it because that's, that's just like how I try to be like, if I'm scared, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And, <laughs> and no matter how many times I do it, I was always like having a panic attack, basically going up because I'm afraid of heights. But then like after the job, it's like, yay. So I still, even now, like going on roller coasters, once I know I was going really high, I'm like, oh God, like, okay, just don't, don't lose it. Don't lose it. And then it gets really high and I'm like, oh my God. And then, but once it starts going fast, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna go on that for a little while though, but that was fun. It uh, it takes a little bit out of you, mate. Like you, you, it it's does, like, yeah. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, like I'm I'm not like a super thrill junkie. Like George knew, like found this out when we we're at like uh, <laughs> Disney World. Like the co have you it, Cosmic Rewind? Like just like threw me off. Like that I didn't, ride. Was... I haven't gotten to do that either because a lot of times I have my uh, little one with me when I go. So if it's oh. like just us, or even if there's three people, it's. So I, I'm going to go, I want to go to Magic Kingdom with friends and that's when I'll do all the crazy stuff. Same thing with yeah. Animal Kingdom. I, a couple of the rides I didn't get to do there. So, I mean, I live here now. I got the passes, so yeah. I'll, I'll get to it. Um, but the, yeah, I really want to do the Snow White one. That's like top on my list at Magic Kingdom. That's probably one of the only ones I really want to do that I didn't get to. And that one is really cool because it's thrilling, but it like, and everyone has like a different threshold, but like for me personally, like the, the mind train is like, it's thrilling, but it never like, it goes right up to the line, but never crosses it. Right. Yeah. So no, it's like, wow, you get a thrill out of it, but you're like, you're not like overly anxious. 
-hmm. Cosmic Rewind is like panic attack city for me. Like I was like, this thing is too much. I'm tapping out. Like, can you stop the ride? <laughs> like, oh yeah, the, oh yeah, I, yeah. I didn't get to do that one. Um, I wasn't. I actually was only with like friends when I went to Epcot. But you know how it is. You have to sign up at like six a.m. to go on that ride. Right. And I didn't. Yes. So <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. That's like your I want, favorite I'll ride. Do it. It is. It's, it's it's my top two favorite rides at Walt Disney World. Cosmic Rewind and Flight of Passage at uh, Animal Kingdom are my two top rides, which I felt bad for OG because, I mean, I, like, I knew, like, he, you know, he, there's certain things that he can't, like, I'm not into. He doesn't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Enough. And I, and see, for me, and this is, like, one of the hardest things because, for me, since I am a thrill junkie, certain things to me is, like, child's play and right. it's like oh yeah you're good you're fine and then yeah. i get a person on there i'm like what the fuck are you talking about this thing <laughs> right. is horrible you know oh, so, so it was like after That's... the fact after the fact they got off um because we also had a, a mutual friend of ours mindy that i put them both together in the car because it was their first time out. riding it and at oh, the dude. end she was like nope that's it. I'm done. Get me out of here. That's it. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, that's how yeah. that's how people are. So, like, when I go, the first time I had gone to Universal, I've only been to Universal twice now, but uh, the first time was a couple years ago now, and I went with um, Jay, Drunk 3PO, and we didn't go on the Hulk because he does not like the Hulk. And I was like, okay, it's fine, whatever. But we went on the bus. We went on, like, everything. Um, but this past time, I went, um, like, not even a month ago, I went to Universal with a bunch of people. And we went on the Hulk coaster and I was like, oh, I'm probably going to hate it. Like, I don't know. because He put it in my head that it wasn't like a good ride. I didn't yeah. mind it. It's not one that I need to go on all the time. It's 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 definitely like a, a scrambler, like a head scrambler. <laughs> I could get why some people wouldn't like it. But I was like, that was fine. I, I liked the cue for it, too. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, everyone has their um, their rides. They just don't really like uh, mine is the Kraken. At SeaWorld, I had the worst headache. My friend is a coaster junkie, and her her boyfriend hates it. And they were they were up from my hometown. She was like, "We go on all the coasters with me," and I was like, "All right, I'll do it, whatever." And I had never been on that one, and I was like, oh, "How bad could it be?" We got off, and I was like, "Oh my god, I want to go home. I need some Advil." <laughs> like oh it was my terrible. God. I'll never I'll never go on the track again because it wasn't I've, even that fun either. I've no <laughs> I've noticed <laughs> that the the roller coasters at Universal, if you sit on the sides like the very ends it's more rough okay. where if you're in the center like so for the for the hulk you can fit uh, what i was is in it? the for, center is it, is it okay were you in the center for the hulk now mm -hmm. if you were at the end it would have you would have had your head jarred even more because i thought because like mine it was bad because like my uh or, or yeah i was like kind of like Actually, I'm trying to remember it because I wasn't like scrambled. So I think my head might have been like wherever my head was, I couldn't move it. <laughs> like because of the way how fast it was. I was like, how do people like move their head back or forward in this ride? Because I once it started, the position that I started in, it wasn't moving. <laughs> like it was just oh. glued. <laughs> oh my god. And I, now Jay doesn't like that one, drunk three PO, hit, hit the Hulk. Mm -hmm. No, he does That's not like funny. that one. So is it just too intense or he just doesn't like I it? I think or? I think he just doesn't like it. He probably gets a headache. That that ride really it depends on like how and he's tall too so who knows i yeah I, it wasn't i don't i just didn't hate it but i it's not going to be one that i need to go on every time um like i like the velocicoaster but it's really intense and that's also not one that i'm going to go on every time people go there for that ride um i like the spider-man ride at universal that's my favorite the yeah, mummy ride was... is fun too I, I i went on that one for the first time i think it might have been closed down the last time i was there the one mm -hmm. that I need to go on is Hagrid's motorbike because the first time I went there, it was closed down. And this time I had gotten there late and Universal was only open for um, a few hours. So we just did a little bit of stuff. So I I'm, I'll go back and get on Hagrid's. Hagrid's is really cool. You would yeah. really enjoy Hagrid's. Uh, the Mummy, I have not done Florida's version of the Mummy yet because it was closed down for its refurbishment when I was down there. But I did, <laughs> I did uh, Universal Hollywood's version of the Mummy and – Boy, was that a big disappointment! And a lot yeah, of people really. say a lot of people say that the Florida version is much better. It is. It was yeah. fun. I, I enjoyed it. And the ending, it was like 
it, it, it turns you. You're expecting to get this like gigantic like finale, and the doors just open, and then it, it takes you back into really? the, the loading station. I'm like, what the heck was that? <laughs> well, yeah, because I think the Florida Pretty version. And correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda, but I think the Florida version has like a fake ending, right? Like you think you're getting off, but you're not, or something like that. So it has. Does yours have the um like with Brendan Fraser when he's like, I want my coffee. <laughs> Oh, thought, you you went forward when the train went off. I thought you hit a button. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that yeah. Uh, George lives right next to the train track. So, uh, yeah. hey, George. Um, are you, oh, I think you're still on. Here mute. we go. Yeah, sorry. Um, hold on one sec, George. And, and Amanda, you might appreciate this. Every time the train goes by, we got to play this. Oh no! I must have hit that track switch. The oh. runaway railway. It's, it's a tradition here on the channel. So. <laughs> there we I go. think it happened last time, so I, I remember. And now yeah, I get yeah. it even more because I've been on the ride. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. No, I actually, um, I don't think we have, man, it's been a while since I've been on that mummy ride, actually. But do we have I the don't Brendan Fraser coffee uh, thing? I don't recall seeing it. He, like, yells, like, can I get a decent cup of coffee? And then, like, the, the mummy. I don't came. recall seeing it when we were in the line. I don't think yeah. so. It, I, I think the, the, it was on the ride when you when it was ending. That, that was kind of how it, like, ended, like, when, when you're slowing down and getting Oh, then off. no. No, 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 no. Then it no. definitely... Then it oh. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you guys definitely got to check that out next time. I I didn't even know that it was up. Uh, my friends were checking like wait times, and they were like, "Oh, because a couple of them didn't have the express pass." It was like literally half of us. Like three of us had the express pass that kicks in after four because we have the annual passes, and then the other ones didn't. And we're like, "Uh," so we're like being careful where we're gonna go because we didn't want to fully be rude and like uh, we're gonna go and we'll go on like five rides while you guys are still waiting on this one. Um. So, yeah, we, we went on the ones that had low wait time, which was the Hulk and the Mummy. Um, and it was fun. Like I said, I only had a few hours. Uh, I was kind of late getting there, and the park was getting ready to close. So I'm going to go back and enjoy more. I, I do love Universal. Uh, it, it's a good time. I think you would really also love um, – like, I actually really like the Hollywood Park. It's a unique – the Hollywood one's very unique. It's not really like a traditional theme park experience. It's like mm -hmm. this kind of like this hybrid of like working studio and theme park. <clears throat> and it's That's very, cool. very, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like the tram tour, um, you learn a lot. It's like if you're into like, you know, movie making and things like that, it, it just, it's cool, cool to see the different sets and how they do certain effects and all that stuff. I think you would really like it, Amanda. It, it's a very unique experience from the park's, um, in Orlando, because the parks in Orlando, the Universal Parks are very traditional theme parks, you know. Mm -hmm. The Hollywood thing is a whole different animal. And George, you recently, you went for the first time, right, to Hollywood? Mm -hmm. uh, I have. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that park. It's it's very different from uh, any park I've been to since Disney, when Disney's Hollywood Studios was Disney MGM Studios, when they had their working uh, studio in that park. But what I took away from Universal Hollywood is the nostalgia of all these movies that I grew up with as a kid. And I got to right. actually see the real life sets of oh, these. Oh, that's cool. I would love and that. And the one that literally gave me literally the goosebumps, the hairs, my, my Italiano hair stood up on my arms. <laughs> on your chest uh, too, right? On my chest. <laughs> <laughs> that um, I, I got to see the set from... <laughs> <laughs> from back to the future oh so i yeah. got this oh, yeah. we only have the, the car tower. over here yeah i'm so sad the ride's not here it was it's the simpsons ride now right Ugh, why would they do why would they do that i'm upset about that yeah um, and that that was pre that was pre comcast because i think comcast has actually done a really good job at like facilitating the parks and all that they really kind of leaned into it before the, the the simpsons thing was like the the previous owners which i think was like ge general electric or something and they just didn't get it like Comcast does. And they were making yeah. some weird decisions. I completely agree with you. Like that Back to the Future ride, it should have kept it. Or they should have reinvented it, reimagined it to be even cooler or something. But to get rid of it, yeah. that's like a that's such a great IP, right? And the music and everything, it just hits like, oh, man. I, I, uh, I also heard that the City Walk over is uh, way better over in California than it is here. Really? I like City Walk over here, but I've, I've heard, I heard that it's just uh, – it, it's nicer over there bigger so both i'm trying to think because i've been to both city walks i think the one in california is more it feels more secluded and i mean that in a good way it yeah, feels it's like not as attached we, to the park like how yeah it's, like, it's right, not yeah. like open so when you're in city walk 
you feel like, okay, there's nothing around you. You're just in city walk. And I love how that there's multiple, actually the, the whole entire park even <laughs> is multiple levels. So even city walk has multiple levels, uh, at California, which I thought was really cool. And I had my first pink's hot dog yeah, uh, yeah. ever, which I have to recommend for anyone who hasn't had a, pink's had a hot dog. You have to get a pink's hot dog. It's well, good. I got a, one of these, I mean, it probably, it probably won't be for a while, but I would like to get to California. I mean, you guys got Toontown there, too, and Knott's Berry Farm. I, I would love to go to Toontown, especially I've seen the videos that they've redone it, and it looks great. Oh, Toontown is so great, Amanda. You would love it. You would absolutely love it. It's it's really cool. Um, the music in there, they've changed the music now, and it's like uh, almost like an homage to like the Disney afternoon. Like they play all like it's like instrumental, but it's like you, you hear like Rescue Rangers and Tailspin and, and Darkwing. That's awesome. And there's oh, still so an attraction there that it's the last piece that you would ever see Roger Rabbit in a Disney theme park. And it's Aww. Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. So, yeah. Yeah. They did, Roger Rabbit. Yeah. They did come in, though, with the uh, the problematic police came in and they they, they, they put a big oh, uh, trench coat on Jessica, covered her up. Like, I'm not even joking. They actually did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Like, so like all the sexiness is gone. She just has to like this, <laughs> this like baggy trench coat. Now so she's like fine. Carmen San Diego now or something like <laughs> that's exactly yes. it great analogy yeah she's like at carmen san diego it's like come on well she can't have like you know just yeah but they went in there and did that whole thing the pr thing but it's still a cool ride i think you would really enjoy it toontown's really awesome that's where our runaway railway is so okay yeah that's where one which the queue the the queue of runaway railway at disneyland is phenomenal it 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 traces back to like the early Mickey Mouse cartoons. You see like Ooh. different props, like from uh, the Prince and the Pauper and uh, the Mickey's Christmas and, and what have yeah. you. So it's the whole queue is an attraction in itself before you even get on the ride. It's fantastic. It's That's fantastic. Awesome. I would love to see that one day. Now yeah, when you come down here, let us know. George will probably you'll probably be living out here, George. So um, yeah. <laughs> you're making moves and you're making I'll moves make a, fast. So yes. yeah, so <laughs> that's what I did to get to Florida. You just got to do it, you know. You yep. just got to beeline out of there, George. You, you got to get out of there before the before the snow hits again, you know. Oh God, that that'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the, the second i see like one one snowflake like hit, hit the hit the ground it's, it's like gonna i gotta like it's gonna get a <laughs> stick and just i'm out i'm out california I'm bound out. <laughs> yeah yeah amanda i wanted to ask you okay so okay so you recently like kind of recently you, you 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 went to the disney parks first time so what would be your ranking so for all the four parks in a walt disney world so from like like your least favorite to like your favorite i guess like how would you rank them I guess, like I said, with Epcot, it might change. Like Epcot and uh, Hollywood Studios might change, but I do really like Hollywood Studios. But right now, and I think it's going to change, especially after I go to ha Animal Kingdom again, because it's I, I'm having a hard time picking between Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom for top. Um, so, but I'll just say it would go Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, and then Magic Kingdom. For me, just because there's so much more to do at Magic Kingdom, I love the rides. I love, you know, like the the uh, the Pirates ride, the Peter Pan ride, even the Mad Hatter ride. I love the little teacups ride. I like the food. Every time I go there, well, besides Tony's, which I'll never go there again. But like snack wise, I um I love getting the little cupcakes with the gray stuff on it at Gaston's Tavern. It's yeah. so rich. I can never finish it, but it's always <laughs> so it's always the same. It's so spot on. I always have to go there and get one. It's so it's just so good. It's a good cupcake. But I always oh, have of it. It's oh every time I have to, I'm like, ah, that's that's like the, one of the first stops that I have to make. I'm like, okay, time to get all messy. Especially when it's hot. And it's like, oh, okay, I gotta go uh clean up now. But um because yeah. I mean it's still so <laughs> it's still so new to me, you know. So I think eventually the ranking might end up changing to where Animal Kingdom will be first, and then Magic Kingdom, and then Epcot, and then maybe Hollywood Studios. Um interesting. But I don't know because I might even like once I actually really get to enjoy Epcot, that could be bumped up to second. Um, yeah. and, Epcot and, and Animal I... Kingdom both have only been one time, and I really enjoyed Animal Kingdom, but I didn't get to do everything. And Epcot, I I just I definitely need to redo. And and I think again, once you experience Disneyland, I think your your uh, list is going to get changed again. Yeah. Because I when you mentioned some of the things at Magic Kingdom that you enjoyed, like you mentioned, you enjoyed Pirates. 
again, I was a huge fan of Pirates because I only got to see Walt Disney World's version. Now, the queue in Walt Disney World's is much better than Disneyland's. However, the ride itself, you're looking at about like three-fourths of the ride cut from Walt Disney World. <laughs> really? So it's even longer. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's longer. One thing, actually, I want to, I really want, next time Jay from Drunk 3 PO, uh, Jay <laughs> Drunk 3 PO comes out here, I don't know if he's been on it yet. The last time I, we were on his show, he, he, was, he hasn't done it yet. I, I really want to like see him go on the Indiana Jones ride. Cause I know he loves Indiana Jones and that ride will blow your mind, Amanda. Like that, that ride is I, great. I don't know. I should know because he talked to like, he's talked on streams and stuff about um, his time in California. I don't know if he got the chance to go on that one. Cause I know when they all went down there, it was mostly for Nintendo land. Yeah. Um, but yeah. he did go like he he's actually was the one that said he liked uh, told me that he liked the city walk in California a little more than the city walk over here. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah. That Indiana Jones. I'm curious his opinion on that because that ride is just game changer. It's, it's, it's out of control. It's out of control. But, but yeah, I know. don't think he's been on it. I, don't, I, I actually don't. I'm not sure, though. I but yeah, you definitely have to let us know, like whenever you can go out to Disneyland, because I purposely want to be there for your your first time i always yeah. love to see a first timer and that's yeah. why i took that's why i took uh og down to walt disney world because i love i love showing people like stuff that i'm used to doing right. and it's like and they get the experience of something something new and something different which mm -hmm. uh which i am glad to still even he was able to experience magic kingdom because he got to experience the people mover and the carousel yeah. progress. Now that's the one thing I will give magic kingdom at Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. we, they have a much better Tomorrowland right now than Disneyland's. Oh yeah. Much better. We haven't had a people mover since 90, like six or something crazy like that. Like oh. it's really sad. Um, <clears throat> carousel progress even longer. I mean, it's, I, I, I loved the Tomorrowland at magic kingdom. I thought it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It's nice. That, yeah. It's, it's, it's blows. Yeah, that blows Disneyland's Tomorrowland out of the water. Like, there's no comparison. Now, George, what's your ranking? Because you've been to all these parks like a bajillion times. <laughs> a bunch times. of times, yeah. bunch yeah. of times. So, for me, definitely Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom's my top. Just, just because there's no other type of park out there in the domestic parks. Now, mm -hmm. eventually, when we experience Tokyo, <laughs> that's probably going to be a whole um, other level of... Yeah. Yeah, Tokyo um, looks so good. Uh, all the stuff I see, I'm like, I want to go so bad. <laughs> so good. But but as far as the domestic parks for Walt Disney World, Animal Kingdom. Hollywood Studios. Okay. Because I just, for some reason, the reason for Hollywood Studios, and I know it's a little bit in a shambles right now for, <laughs> for like an identity crisis, but I still love that old classic feel of Hollywood, especially in the front of the park with the Grauman's Chinese theater, the Hollywood Braun Derby, the sunset right. Boulevard with where tower of terror is at. Uh, I don't know. It just kind of takes me back to my childhood seeing, you know, the Muppet vision, 3d star tours, all the shows. Um, Ep then Epcot Epcot, I feel like would have been number two, but I feel like, it needs just a little bit more work and I feel like it'll get there. I, yeah. I really do, but I feel like it just needs just a little bit more. Oomph. It's pretty close to number two. It's, it's almost tied for second with Hollywood studios, but Hollywood studios just has a little bit more. And then of course, magic kingdom, which was my number one is now wow. number four after experiencing Disneyland. It's like, that's weird. That's wild. That's wild. Yeah, my 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 ranking is um like the worst. Yeah, the worst for me was Magic Kingdom, and then I would say, see, it's t it's weird. Okay, so Magic Kingdom, and then I would say Hollywood Studios was like the next worst. But like, I actually really liked Hollywood Studios. That's how I feel about it. Like, I don't want to rank it bad, but it's like you know, I like some other stuff more. <laughs> That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. And it actually felt like I actually liked it more than I thought I would because I thought it was just going to be a bunch of sound stages, to be honest. And actually, there's a lot of theming there. There's a lot of like old school Hollywood that I really dig a lot. So it was actually like like higher on my list than than I was expecting going into the, going into it. Um, so yeah, it would be Magic Kingdom and then Hollywood, 
and then it's weird because like Epcot and Animal Kingdom were like kind of like neck and neck for me. But I think Animal Kingdom gets like the slight edge. Um, I, it, that park, Animal Kingdom just blew me away. Like when I walked into that place, I was like, this is just out of control. Like, it was so beautiful with the trees, the waterfalls, everything. And then Pandora, it was like just overwhelming. And it was like frustrating too because like you'll take pictures of this place and the pictures don't like look anything like what you're experiencing. It's like it doesn't do the justice, you know? It's just a gorgeous place. Um, Epcot was amazing. I loved World Showcase, like the Japan Pavilion. Like we spent a lot of time in there, George. And like I was joking Amanda with George. Like I'm like, yeah, you could tell like the uh, cast members in the Japan Pavilion were like actually from Japan because they were like super nice. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like you didn't get any drama. Like out here in Disneyland, like sometimes it's like hit or miss with the cast members. Sometimes really, they're pretty good out here. I from the times I've gone, they're pretty bubbly. Like the first nice. time I even went, like even the uh, there was a security guard. I was wearing a yellow dress the first time I went to Hollywood Studios, and he was like, "Bell's here," and he started singing "Be Our Guest." I was like, "Hey, nice. <laughs> hello." <Nice. laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you you guys do have better cast members. I think we talked about that, George, right? When we were on, we did. yeah, you guys have yeah. really good cast members out there. Like we have, like I don't know what it is. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say it's bad out at Disneyland. It's just yeah. as you said, OG. It's like a hit or miss. You could either get a really good day, where you get a bunch of good cast members, you know, excellent service, and then you can get a day where it's just like periodically throughout your day, it's like you get a grumpy. Uh, a grumpy it's like person. it's like uh, right. forgive me for saying it. So it's like who pissed in your Cheerios? Yeah. It's like right. that's how it is at Sea World here. <laughs> like it's when they're on, they are on, but when they're off it's like Ooh. Ooh. yeah right you just, you just gambling the dice. Times, uh, so yeah yeah it's it's rough it's rough yeah we have some it's real hit or miss you know and it's kind of sad you know but yeah florida you guys you guys have some really really good cast members i remember i remember like talking to george about that when we we're down there like the um just everyone they, they all seem like they were in good spirits and they were like really helpful and nice and everything and um, it was way more consistent than what we have out here i don't know i think out here too is a little bit of that like god i'm probably gonna get canceled for saying this <laughs> but it's like california so it's like oh god i'm handing out churros and i'm only making 20 an hour you know it's like, like this kind of like attitude where like oh I, you know i should be making like 30 an hour whatever they are demanding now there's a little bit of that like kind of chip on your shoulder kind of energy um over here yeah. and out there it I, I just feel like it's just like a better environment with the cast and stuff a little more appreciative like hey you know we're just here to you know you know get, provide the magic or whatever and out, out here it's a little bit more like grumpy employee sort of vibes <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Is that kind of what you were getting, uh, George, a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I've I've noticed, like, every time I'd go on both coasts, you know, I always like to not necessarily, like, compare both because they're both very different in 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 a good way. You know, they're like yeah. apples and orange, two completely different tasting fruits, but, you know, equally delicious. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I have noticed, you know, as time went on, I've noticed – I've had some issues with California cast members as to opposed to Florida cast members. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I find myself at city hall, uh, (laughs) quite too many times at, uh, (laughs) at Disneyland. (laughs) Oh my God. Doing the whole Karen thing. I heard. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's one thing. So super random, but that's the one thing I like too about, um, Magic Kingdom is Main Street, just like how everything's right there. And like if you if you get injured, they have like you know where to go. They have like the first aid spot. I mean, I'm sure that all the parks have it, but that one is just so easy. Convenient. And if you have a little one, it's extremely convenient because they have that baby area that you can just go in there. And when it's really hot and you have a kid, it's nice because you can just go in there and chill <laughs> and they have like a Disney movie playing in there. And so nice. that's there's a there's other little reasons why I liked Magic Kingdom. Uh more but like i said once i go to animal kingdom again it might get bumped up because i didn't get to do everything it was also it was like a really hot day and there's a lot to do so I'll, i'm gonna go back again epcot and mad and uh animal kingdom are, are gonna get redos i loved animal kingdom i didn't love epcot but i think i know i will once i get to redo it 
And, and Amanda, you have a little one, uh, right? Um, yeah. So, so that also plays into it, I think, too. Like with Magic there's, Kingdom, there's so much know? more to do there. There's like no height requirements for a lot of the rides. There's so like way more. I thought that Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom would both be better for a little one, but Animal or Magic Kingdom actually is. Animal Kingdom's really good, but there's a few rides that you can't take a little one on there. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard over there. It's hard over there. Yeah. Now, our last and final topic is going to be Epic Universe. So that's coming out in, like, we talked about earlier a little bit, but, like, in two years. Mm -hmm. And so far, we haven't really heard anything from Disney about, like, what their response is going to be or, like, you know. It's been, like, kind of – it's been kind of crickets. Um, yeah, except they probably want to save it or they have yeah. or they have no idea and they're just going to pull something out when the time comes uh, right exactly exactly so we'll see what happens george what do you i'll start with you what, what are your what do you what's your what's your opinion on it your theories are they kind of like what amanda was saying kind of wait and see is it kind of like uh, i think i think that they're i'm going to double down on this i think i'm kind of in the perspective of both sort of speak and i'll explain i feel like disney is going to respond but I feel okay. like they're going to respond with something that was already in their own mindset in their pipeline that is going to cost money, but it's not going to cost them extra money because of Epic Universe. For instance, I feel like, and I'm going to double down on it, <laughs> at Destination D23, they're going to go live. They're doing a okay. live stream of Destination D23 on mm -hmm. September 9th. Uh, it's at 9 a.m. It should be on the Disney Parks blog. Uh, yeah, the Disney Parks blog. And and I also feel like it's also going to be on the D23 website. should be on both. Um, normally, they don't do that with a D23 event unless they have something big worth mentioning. Right. And the first thing out of the gate in, in that morning is going to be the parks resorts and experiences with uh big daddy josh tomorrow so we'll see you know if this is just going to be another what if but i think that this is going to be the the change of dino land because they they had seen uh imagineer executives walking around dino land yeah and they already kind of gave the hint of moana and zootopia replacing dino land and i feel like that's going to be disney's call to epic universe because it was probably already in their pipeline even though it wasn't really officially <laughs> announced to us as the fans but the imagineers knew it so right. it's like they kind of kept it in their back pocket and it's like okay now it's the best time to do it to kind of uh, kind of throw that at to say, okay, well, they're built universal's building Epic. We're doing this where I feel like when, when wizarding world came out, they knew they had to do something right. phenomenal. And then that's when Pandora and galaxy's edge and toy story land, like all that came into the pipeline at once. I feel like Disney is just going to just go with what was already in their own pipeline. If Epic then becomes a phenomenal success like Wizarding World, then I feel Disney's going to have to go back <laughs> into yeah. their blue sky uh, seller, so to speak. And that could potentially become the Coco and Kanto villains beyond Big Thunder. Right. That's 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 my interpretation of it. That's what I'm going to go with. And we'll have to see uh, the kickoff with Destination D23 on September 9th. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. Amanda, what do you think? You think Disney's going to respond or is it kind of like, you know, I, like you said, like a wait and see thing? I think I, I agree with George where they they have to have something. I mean, because whether this was happening or not, I'm sure they were they're, they're constantly thinking of new ideas. At least some people are maybe not higher ups with you know, like the imagineers like he said um i i think that epic universe is gonna be just amazing i can't wait for it i'm a huge donkey kong fan so that <laughs> alone i can't wait for that they have the the roller coaster i, I don't know if it's gonna be 3d or, or not or if it's it's actually like but it, it's the uh the barrels that you sit in yeah. and, the, and, and it's like oh i just saw that so i can't wait because it's gonna get a whole different people like nintendo fans gamers they're all gonna it's, it's gonna be a whole different group of people plus the people that are already like universal like i i really can't wait so if they're gonna i think they're gonna knock it out of the park because they 
they always seem to knock it out of the park when they do stuff. Um, so Disney's really going to have to pull something out to, to compete with this. Because even right now, everyone's saying a lot of the parks are kind of empty. When I went, it was, mm, but it was also freaking hot. So yeah. some people don't want to be there when the, the last day that I went there, when I went to Hollywood Studios, or no, it was, yeah, Hollywood Studios, it was like 95 degrees, feels like 110. And I was like, <laughs> sure does. So <laughs> it, it wasn't that empty, but it's, so it's kind of hard to judge, like, are people just like mad at what's going on with Disney or is it just because it's hot? Uh, all the Halloween stuff is coming, so I know it's going to pick up, but they are absolutely going to have, they're going to have to do something big to compete. 100%. And I don't know if they have that planned, but like George said, that's not a bad idea. I love the movie Coco. So if they do something with Coco on for that, um, they, oh, they, Co- they gotta, they gotta do something. Coco would be so great. I mean, Coco, um, I wish we would get something Coco at California adventure. Cause it ties in with the Latin culture we have here in California. I think there's so much yeah. potential with that IP. It's just, it's just so amazing. Yeah. That'd be awesome <clears throat> over there at magic kingdom. Um, I kind of think Disney's going to do like a wait and see. Uh, I think they have plans, obviously, like Daddy Josh, uh, George, like you mentioned, he, you know, the Villains Land, the Coco and all that stuff. They got plans in their back pocket. I think they're going to wait and see to kind of see like the guest movement kind of patterns. Right. So Mm -hmm. with Universal, I think that Epic Universe, a lot of people are going to go to Epic Universe. I think what Disney's going to wait for, though, is not so much like maybe the crowds at, at Epic Universe, but like how it affects the other two universal parks so like let's say epic is really full and islands of adventure is really full but it's really sucking a like business away from like the studio the universal studio park um disney might be like well let's hold off on a response because this maybe isn't as much of a hit as we thought as, as we, maybe they thought because it's it's pulling away from one of the other parks that they have it kind of similar thing actually kind of happened here um with uh, disney world when they built animal kingdom it pulled away from it cannibalized a little bit of their business, like with like Hollywood studios and all that. So I think Disney's going to wait. They're going to kind of see what kind of business um, universal does and how it affects the other two parks that are existing. If it's buco business bonkers, crazy. Yeah. Disney's going to have to respond. You know, they're going to have to do that Coco thing, the villains land thing or something. Um, We'll see what happens. You know, Disney's been really, really weird right now, though, and a little frustrating, in my opinion, like with the like the new stuff, like they haven't announced anything for anything. <laughs> like, like they're just like mums yeah. the word, like, right. Even here in California, like it's a bunch of hinting and stuff, but it's like there's just nothing. It's, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the best way I that it could be said Moana and Zootopia at Animal Kingdom is going to be the calling to just them building epic universe if epic universe is the success that we all know it is going to be coco and kanto villains land beyond big thunder at magic kingdom because i feel like when you look at both concept arts the one at animal kingdom is more fleshed out it's more detailed where the one uh for beyond beyond big thunder it's more like a watercolor illustration it's more not as detailed so they have a rough ballpark idea where they want to go with it but i feel like that they're taking their time now waiting to see if epic is going to do as well it is going to do and then probably in a year or so that's when they'll make the announcement because when wizarding world opened that was back in 2010 and disney made pandora's announcement in 2011 so right it yep. took that year for them to say, okay, we got to come up with something. But it didn't take that year when they made the announcement. They were already in cahoots with James Cameron and John Landau, but they held it. They saved it yeah. for when it was the right time to use it. And I feel like that's what's happening here with Epic Universe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll we'll see. Yeah, uh, you're, you see. You're, you're pretty lucky, Amanda. You're, you're right there. You can check it out right when it I opens. I can't wait. Can't wait. I'm going to, too. I can't wait gonna be great it's pretty awesome pretty awesome so amanda thank you so much for coming on again it's been way too long we'll have you on again very very soon yes. if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media yeah find me on youtube wicked virtue uh twitter wicked underscore virtue underscore uh kick wicked virtue instagram again 
Just find my link tree somewhere and you'll find all my stuff. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah. Link tree will be in the description. So definitely check her out. Follow, subscribe to all her socials. She is awesome. Friend of the channel Thank for a very you. long time. We, we absolutely love Amanda. We love Wicked Virtue. So definitely give her all the love. And right over here, we got a citrus, George. George, if you let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, everything except your OnlyFans. That's not appropriate, sir. Uh, it, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's that's part of Rumble. <laughs> yeah, it's a Rumble exclusive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, but in any case, you can find me on my kid friendly, family oriented uh, platforms uh, at Disney George on Twitter. Uh, the podcast a walk with walt and of course you can find me on my home base on orange go 55 with citrus corner with all that sweet juicy but sometimes sticky disney news and info and unlike wicked virtue i don't have a tree i may possibly have a bush but i mean it's probably all <laughs> old and wilted but you know it's <laughs> You're so funny. So funny. Oh my God, George, you're so funny. <laughs> so with that, thank you all so, so much for watching. Comment down below with all your comments on your favorite park, your least favorite park, Epic Universe, the Moana um, Journey of Water inspired by thing <laughs> over at Epcot. I can never get that name right. Um, too long. It's too it's... long. Yeah, the Moana water thing. Let's we'll just go with that. There we yeah. go. Comment George down is below. freaking out inside. <laughs> you know, he's like, ah. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And as always, have a Bye. wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye, everybody.